Here's a case of a 56-year-old female complaining of about three months of pain in her left knee. She had pain with walking. She had no mechanical complaints. And ultrasound did reveal a ganglion just medial to the semimembranosus tendon. On physical exam, she was tender in the pes bursa region, also in the medial joint line. So I think there was some pain referred from this ganglion. It's important not to diagnose this as a Baker cyst as it does not lie between the medial gastrocnemius tendon and the semimembranosus tendon. And you have to have a fairly keen eye in order to identify this. A six year old female here for pain in her left knee for about three months, no injury. Uh, mostly on physical exam, she has pain in the pes bursa region, also some moderate tenderness in the medial joint line. She's complaining of pain and stiffness with walking and bending her knee. There's no locking. <coughs> Just looked at her MRI, which basically shows arthritis under the kneecap. It does have what appears to be a ganglion cyst just medial to the semimembranosus tendon. So we're going to go ahead and just look at that. Are you real tender over here? Yeah. Is yeah. it you complain of pain here? Yeah. Or most of your pain seems to be up here? Wow. So it's, this is anterior. The cyst, I believe, is right here, just medial to the semimembranosus tendon. Here we're going to focus on the anatomy involved with this ganglion cyst. Here's the medial aspect of the knee. You can see the tendons that make up the pes anserinus region. Here's the semimembranosus muscle transitioning into a tendon on the inner aspect of the knee. And here's that ganglion that's basically bulging between the semimembranosus tendon and the actual proximal tibia itself. It also abuts the semitendinosus tendon and seems to be approaching also the gracilis tendon as well. Here we're just zooming in on this ganglion. We made the semitendinosus tendon translucent. Now we're just rotating. We're bringing back the semitendinosus tendon. And here we are rotating again, and we can appreciate the cyst from an anterior medial perspective. Now she's got a nice little crease here, which probably causes some anisotropy and artifact. So I'm going to try to be a little more generous on my gel. And you have the semimembranosus muscle on the bottom of the screen. And here we can appreciate the semimembranosus muscle transitioning to a fairly thick tendon right above the medial femoral condyle. Now I'm just going to go distal. Here is that ganglion, I believe. Here's the ganglion cyst, somewhat inconspicuous, as it kind of blends in with the surrounding subcutaneous fat. And here we are, kind of zoomed in on this ganglion. You can see that it basically abuts right into the subq fat on the sagittal MRIs. We have a semimembranosus muscle on the right and the bottom. Let's just follow that tendon again. Let's try to keep our probe flush. And here you can see the medial gastrocnemius muscle, and here you see artifact caused by the crease within the popliteal fossa. You don't want to mistake that for a cyst. And here we are toggling, and we can get a pretty good look at the semimembranosus tendon. And here the distal aspect of the semimembranosus tendon is black, secondary to anisotropy. We have medial gastrocnemius muscle. Right side of the screen is proximal, and as we go medial, you can see that semimembranosus tendon. Here again is that thick semimembranosus tendon just over the medial femoral condyle. And here we can see that cyst in the sub-Q fat. Yeah, let's switch to an axial view. And here's an axial MRI. You can appreciate that ganglion just kind of wrapping around the semimembranosus tendon and then going medially. Also, you can appreciate that the semimembranosus tendon is a pretty thick, wide tendon, especially compared to the semitendinosus tendon. Right side of the screen is medial. Here we are, we're looking at the semimembranosus tendon, anisotropy of the tendon, as we toggle the probe. You get a good look at her posterior medial femoral condyle with the overlying hyaline cartilage. And again, we're right above the joint line, you see the semimembranosus tendon. And then you can see to the left the medial gastrocnemius tendon. And here the semimembranosus tendon is dark secondary anisotropy. You may mistake this for a cyst because of the anisotropy. If you go a little bit lateral, you can see that medial gastrocnemius muscle. And this is the cyst now, just to the right of the semimembranosus tendon. See, I'm toggling the probe and it's just coming out of view. And here you can appreciate the cyst medial to the semimembranosus tendon, so this does not qualify as a Baker cyst. But it doesn't, it doesn't light up like a tendon with anisotropy. It's just going out of view because the probe is just angling away. Now, watch what happens when I go over the semimembranosus tendon and I toggle it. 
So we have a real tendon. Now you can see that tendon. And here again, a tendon, when you toggle, will go in and out of view, unlike a ganglion. Here again, we're toggling the probe. You can see that semimembranosus tendon turning from a black circle to a white circle. And the ganglion is black all the time, so when you toggle the probe, either you'll see it or it'll just go out of view. And here we are again, just zooming in on the ganglion cyst, which you can see protruding medially just next to the semimembranosus tendon.